So we are going to discuss with uh, the question here in the stock production management. And uh, specifically, we are going to look at the topic which is production planning, right? Yeah? And uh, capacity management, production planning and capacity management. So we are going to see that under this topic, it is a topic uh, that looks at if it is because it is two weeks, we are going to be looking at production planning and we still look at capacity management. Production planning, we are looking at controlling, uh, monitoring, and determining the output volumes, so the volumes of what you produce in the company. Then, and how you control and monitor them. Then when you go to uh, capacity management, now you're going to be controlling the size of resources. Because you're going to see that when you are going to produce maybe a given volume output, you deal with a certain amount of resources. And you have to control those resources. You have to determine the number, the amount of resources. And the first is, uh, you have a lot of resources in terms of when you are looking at resources, basically, the production capacity plan can be comprised of two. One, the product, product capacity plan, where we look at materials, uh, maybe ingredients. Then you can look at workforce planning, where you can look at, am I going to employ a lot of labor compared to machines, which is all labor intensive, or you want, you want to employ in one which is a lot of machines compared to labor, which can be calculated to the company. Then you can look at tools and uh, equipment planning, uh, how you are going to, the number of tools you are going to use. Then, when you are looking at, because capacity we say is linked with resources, so the resources of the business can be cargo, uh, we can look at land, the trees, the labor, it could be raw materials, it could be machines, it could be equipment, it could be time, and it could be other facilities, facilities in terms of many buildings. So you look at how you monitor, under capacity plan, you, you look at how you control those resources based on your output and what you produce. Yeah, and we have different approaches which we use in the production of capacity. Approach. Here we have different approaches which we can which can include the aggregate output approach. Here you're looking at the general the general output numbers. Basically, what you what you what you what you will have in the in the final as your final volume, the volume much the volume that you will have. You can give an example. For example, if you want to produce uh, lawn mowers, and uh, in, you can look at different months. I uh, can say in January you want to produce 200 lawn mowers. February want to produce 100 lawn mowers, uh, then March want to produce 500, something like that. Then you're looking at the, the aggregates, the total, the total volume of everything that will be that will be produced in a given in, in, in your farm, in your production, production large farm. Yeah. And uh, when you look at aggregate production plan, here you have different factors that, that you determine that or that influence the production plan. You have uh, the marketing, customer demand, you look at how much people are what uh, demanding in relation to finally what are the final volume that you will be producing. You look at the finance cash flow. Uh, here you look at uh, how much how much the how much finances you, you will need in order to, to produce the final output that you want. You have the human resource manpower planning, you look at how many people you will need, the labor force you need in your company here to produce the aggregate demand. You look at the engineering design comp completion, you look at how you, you will design your system, how you design your system in order to come up with the final product which you, which you want, yeah. Uh, you look at uh, procurement supplies performance, here you're looking at procurement, how will you purchase the different raw materials, how will you bring in, yeah, the equipment, how will you bring them in, so that's what you look at under procurement supply performance. Then you can also look at production capacity inventory, uh, you look at how much will I keep as inventory in my production at in my production farm? Yeah. Mm. And then uh, when you come to that is now aggregate production plan. Uh, when you of course there are different approaches, production capacity and planning decision approaches, and that is one of them. But it has those details under it. And now when you come from aggregate output, out, aggregate output plan, you now move to aggregate capacity plan. Here you're looking at the feasibility of the aggregate output plan and evaluate the overall capacity utilization. In other words, we talk about is this, we're talking about how is it possible, uh, how will you use the resources you have in order to come up with the, with the, with the output that you want. 
they're looking at how we plan for the resources which is actually have. That's what they call how is the capacity plan. And then from that, you can talk about master production schedule. Here you're looking at master production schedule, you talk about how much you're producing at different time periods. It can be per week, it can be per month, it can be per day. Here I say, for example, some, some say I'll be producing 200 bottles per day of mineral water, or I'll be producing 500 or 1,000 bottles in a week. Now there I'm looking at uh, master production schedule. I'm looking at the statement of supply, how much of supply is demanded. And then I can also look at uh, rough gas capacity plan. Here I'm looking at how much we need, how much we need to have to take on when we get the, the output that we finally want. And when we talk about rough gas plan, we, we talk about um, the, 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 the resources in relation to finally what you, what you have to put out. That is what we call the rough gas capacity plan. Yeah. And then the material requirements plan, this deals with uh, uh, the, the, the different materials that you, you, you will need for your, for, your, for your production and how you will get them. For example, I can give an example if I want to produce, uh, can give an example if I want to produce chapati, yeah? Uh, material requirements plan, I'll be looking at how will I get the wheat that I'll use, how will I get the, I can say the charcoal I'll use in the preparation of, of, of the chapati, how will I get the cooking oil that I'll use, that is now my material requirements plan, I'll design it a plan of how I will get those resources that I want. And uh, maybe to look at this in a better way, it's, 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 uh, it's more in a summarized form, which we can look at here, so that you get to understand maybe in a better way. Because these, these approaches, they can be summarized in a way, which I can actually explain to you in a better way right here. Uh, you can look at um, the sales and operation plan. This one deals with uh, the sales which you will actually make and then and the operation planning. In other words, uh, if it, how, many, how much sales do I want to make? I want to make these sales, right? And now the, in relation to the operations, how will I plan in order to make those sales, in order to make those outputs so that I take it, take it out as my sales? But remember that is determined by the demand management. In other words, this is where how much do people actually demand because you can't, you can't uh, produce what people don't want. It means you have to think about how much people demand and that is the demand management. You look, you look at how much people are demanding. And then that, that also correlates with, uh, with the, that correlates with the, uh, with, the, uh, with the master production schedule. Master production schedule, here you're looking at uh, specifically how much, what do I need, what do actually the people want. Yes, I have a, a company whereby I'm producing chapatis, I'm producing Rolexes, and maybe I can, I'm producing flight eggs, yeah, I have also flight eggs there with me. But then I'm looking at now, what do people actually want in a specific market? If they want chapatis, yes. Now, master production schedule, I look at specifically those chapatis. And then, when you look at specifically those chapatis, you're talking about uh, resource planning, which is here. Here you're looking at, uh, mm, if the people want chapatis, do I have the resources required for chapatis, Rolexes, and the eggs they want? Yes, I have the eggs, I have the wheat, I have that. That is the long range. But now when we come down here in the in the in the in the rough cut rough cut capacity planning, we are actually looking at uh, the, those resources which I now have in in total. What which how, how much resources we specifically go to the chapatis, how much resources specifically go for the eggs, how much resources will exactly will specifically go for for the relics, yeah? That's the that's the rough cut capacity. I'm I'm I'm, I'm now looking at the the resources, how, how I will plan for the resources which I actually have in order to get the aggregate output, the aggregate plan volume which I want. Yeah. And now when we move from the from the from the from the rough cut capacity planning, we now move to the we now move to the detailed material plan. Right? Because we said you you, you have a, you have your, your your company, you're producing um, chapatis, you're producing Rolex, you're producing eggs, yeah. But now we are looking at Chapatis, yes. Now detailed material planning. What do I need for the chapatis in particular? I need wheat, I need uh, cooking oil, I need maybe charcoal in order to produce those, that chapati. Detailed material, in detail, that chapati. What does it require? It requires those things that I've mentioned. 
it requires cooking oils, it requires wheat. That's the detailed material plan we are now looking at. And now when you look at that detailed material plan, we ask now ourselves, where shall we get those materials from? We shall get them from our suppliers. That's a supplier system. And then in the middle there, we have material and capacity plan. You will get those materials from the suppliers. But then how will you manage them? That's the material and capacity plan. If I get, for example, 200 tons, uh, 200, okay, two tons of wheat, how will I manage the material and the capacity and the mass of that wheat so that I get finally the chapatis that I want? Yeah, that is, that is, that is, that is how we operate now the supply systems. And now when you talk about the supply systems, thereafter you need to talk about the, now the short run, the short range, short range actually, short range talks about the finite loading, finite loading here I'm talking about input and output analysis, I will say, if I get those two tons of wheat that, I, that, I'm, that I'm getting, uh, how much will I, okay, I'm putting now the two tons of wheat, how much chapatis, how many chapatis am I getting? Finally, I'm getting, let me say, uh, 2,000 chapatis, right? Now that is the, the, the finite loading, input and output. It is with input and output. I analyze and see, do am I making a profit? Am I making a loss in relation to what I'm putting in and what I'm getting out? That is what you talk about, the short range. Here I'm now zeroing down to the final product and I'm looking at how much I put and how much I'm getting out, yeah? That's the, the, the finite loading. And when, uh, when, I, when I talk about that, you can see they're talking about input and, out, and output analysis. And right from there, I'll go to now product activity control. Product activity control, this is, this deals with, uh, this is the shop floor systems. These are the shop floor systems whereby you'll be talking about now the different, the, the, the different approaches you, 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 you will use in the production activity control, which is the same as shop floor. I can the, 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 I can talk about the loading. I can talk about sequencing. I can talk about uh, I can talk about different forms. And now when I talk about loading, here I'll be talking about uh, analyzing jobs uh, in relation to the loading. I, I talk about assigning jobs, assigning jobs to, to, to Chapati. And here I'll be looking at uh, how much people, how many people will I put at the line. Of the how many people will I put on the line of rice? That's what I'm talking about. That is loading. I'm assigning jobs in my production, in my farm, right? I'm, I'm assigning jobs to different people. Here I'm looking at the standard costs for each line. I'm looking at if I put 10 people here and they're producing 10 chapatis, they're producing 100 chapatis a day, right? Uh, what is the standard cost for each employee? Uh, how much am I putting in maybe water in the production, in my the production? How much is the water? That's what I'm talking about. The standard costs for each line. I look at each line and I look at the standard cost which I'm incurring. That, that, that's the loading. That's what they talk about. And now, when you talk about there's another, there, 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 there's something else which you look at, which is scheduling, which is sequencing. Sorry, sequencing. This deals with uh, with orders for production. In other words, people have made orders in your company. They have made orders in your farm to produce. And they want you to produce for them the chapatis which we are talking about. And we are looking at how will you provide their orders? How will you come to provide what they have actually ordered for? You can talk about, I can use different approaches, and these are the approaches which we shall look at under sequencing. You can look at first come, first serve. That's the first approach. Here, it means the one who brought in his first order, I will handle his first order first. The one who brought in the second order, I will handle his second order first. One who came in the third order, I'll handle the third order, the third order first. That's what we talk about, first come and first, first come, first serve. That's the first approach under sequencing. Then I should talk about the shortest processing time first. Shortest, time, shortest processing time first. In other words, here I'm talking about uh, uh, shortest time. If, if, he, if he's making an order, and then his order takes one hour, first off like that. So that's the one who, whose order takes two days, coming next and I'm also looking at another approach which is short which is uh, nearest or earliest due date first. I look at if you come in with the order, when do you want it? You want it tomorrow, I'll work on it first. One wants it on, on the other day that will come in later, I'll handle it last. And then I'm looking at uh, the list list slack. List slack here you look at you get the 
difference between the two dates and uh, the, 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 the visual test processing time pass. The difference, in other words, I get the difference between the shortest processing time pass if you want, if you, in your, your order, entails me to work on it in one day, right? Those are 24 hours. And then the other guy's order entails me to work in two days, those are 48 hours. It means, and then uh, I look at uh, the, 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 the nearest, okay, the, the earliest due date pass. I'm looking at uh, mm, his order, he wants it in two days. This first guy, the one with the 24 hours, he wants it in, uh, no, he wants it in, actually, the earliest due date first. He wants it in, uh, uh, we are looking at the next slide. Here we talk about, we get the difference between the due date and the processing time. And the one that with the, the one that has the least difference is what you consider. Then you can also look at the another option, which is list charge, list change over cost. Here you look at you can have two options whereby in the production system you want to maybe produce, you have to change from producing panta, for example, to coke. And then another option is changing from uh, you, you you keep producing panta, but then you, you change the bottles. It can be 300 bottles to 500 milliliter bottles, which one is easier. So I consider, I look at the chain, I look at the cost, and the one that gives me the least cost is what I consider. Uh, the other option is, the other option under sequence is combination of two priorities. I can, con I can combine two priorities. One can be shortest time, or, and then the other option can be fast come, fast serve. I can combine those two at, under combination. Then, basically, this sequencing it deals, with, uh, it deals with satisfying the customer. That's what we look at. Because as we are looking at, we are looking at how, how the, 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 the customer orders in relation to how we provide the service. Then the other option, the other thing is a critical ratio. It's also a method you can use under, under production activity control. So under critical ratio, you divide the time remaining in order to provide the order to the customer. You divide it with the work days. Work days, here I mean the work days which you actually work in your production, in your production farm. Yeah? And the one that gives you the least ratio is what you consider. That's the critical ratio. Then another another subtopic which is matching capacity with the demand strategies. We have different strategies which you consider. One of them is proactive strategy, and the other one is reactive strategy. Under proactive strategy, here we are adjusting demand. And when we are adjusting demand, we can use either price, we can use communication to customer, and we can vary services. When you are looking at adjusting price. I can increase the price when I see that I don't actually have enough in my stock. I increase the price so that it reduces the amount that is demanded, right? And the other one is communication with the customer. I can also talk to customers and tell them, hey, I don't have enough in stock, so I'm not providing for this week, yeah? And the other thing, I can vary services. For example, I, I say during uh, the, 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 the rainy season, I'll be producing more umbrellas, right? And maybe during the, the sunny season, I'll be producing less of the umbrellas, yeah? That's the varying service or delivery. Then the reactive strategies, we have, uh, here we said you adjust the capacity. You adjust the capacity in the production system while you're producing in your farm. So when you're adjusting capacity, you can either stretch the existing capacity in case people demand more. I can increase on the machinery which I actually use so that I meet the demand. Or I align capacity to meet the demand. I align capacity here, I mean, if I have the machines, that means I, I use them the more. So that I actually beat up the demand that you are actually demanding for. And they also lead. Lead here, you produce and then wait for the customers to demand. I can produce umbrellas so that I wait for them to demand. That's the lead strategy. Then there's also the lag strategy. Lag strategy here, what actually happens is I wait for them to demand, then I produce. Then under match, matching strategy or match strategy, here I make sure what they demand is what they produce. In other words, Make sure I run the same line. Thank you for watching this video. We shall be up for different questions.